If you are a 3D artist, you more likely than not have heard about different types of texturing. And one of them is vertex painting. It sounds interesting and stuff, but what is it about? And is it really useful? On the other hand, how does it compare with other texturing methods such as texture painting, which is really popular in game development and VFX projects? In addition to more questions that hopefully we'll go through in this video. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Vertex painting is an old computer graphics trick that dates back to the early days, particularly in the 90s, when CGI and 3D video games were starting to find their way into the mainstream. At the time, computers and game consoles couldn't handle large textures, so this technique emerged a solution to allow artists to paint colors directly on top of 3D models instead of using hardware power to process the textures. As you may know, a 3D object is made up of a series of points called vertices, which are created to create edges. These in turn connect to form faces. Now, vertices contain details about their position in the 3D space, such as their location, the normal vectors, and yes, the color of each vertex as well. Then there is a gradient blending the colors along the edges between each vertex, which are consequently mixed towards the center of every face. The idea is that, instead of using a texture map that wraps around the model, the colors are stored at each vertex and then blended across the faces of the model. Of course, in today's age, simply painting colors isn't enough. But rest assured, because this workflow still allows you to paint textures as well. And that's in two ways. You can use it to blend textures by manually painting over the other with different brush types, or by combining it with other variations such as vertex color masking. And this explains why vertex painting is still heavily used in the industry. For example, within Unreal Engine, a software that I would argue popularized it even further, thanks to its impressive environment toolset. But let's keep this detail in mind for later. Vertex painting is also used across many VFX productions and AAA video games, such as the Uncharted series, which use for its environment multiple vertex color channels and textures in different situations, as well as many world space techniques. Texture painting, on the other hand, which most of you guys are likely familiar with, follows a similar concept to paint directly on top of 3D models. However, instead of storing data in vertices, it stores it in a collection of 2D images based on the UVs you make beforehand. This includes an image for base colors, another for normals, and then roughness, metallic, and so on. This type of texturing gained momentum in the early 2010s following the release of Mari and then Substance Painter in 2014 which became the industry standard for texturing that almost every 3D artist uses for their tasks. When it comes to sheer power, texture painting definitely takes the cake, because it is the same thing, with more features, tools, and a higher quality of detail. I mean, vertex painting existed for longer, so even though what I'm about to say can be controversial, Vertex painting is an ancient technique, despite the recent modernization. So, vertex painting is directly applied to the vertices of a model and it offers a way for a simpler and less detailed workflow. You can paint materials on top of each other with layers, as well as using effects such as masking, gradient patterns, and so on. In addition to manually painting with brushes, which can be customized for size, opacity, and texture. Then you have different blend modes, which are used to control how vertex textures blend with existing tools, blend with existing colors or textures, and different transitioning types to dictate how smooth or sharp the textures blend with each other, along with their normal and height values. Besides, the amount of details it provides is dictated by the vertex count or the vertex numbers and it isn't flexible when it comes to adjusting the details compared to textures. 
which allows pixel level precision. The thing is, everything I just mentioned about vertex painting also applies to texture painting, but with more tools and features. Texture painting software typically use procedural workflows that rely on mathematical algorithms or nodes to create various looks and effects. There are many techniques to name, but smart masks are one of the best examples, and you can find them in software such as Substance Painter, in addition to Quixel Mixer and even Mari or Blender to a certain extent. Long story short, they can create a variety of texture and effects and blend types between textures. For instance, they can automatically generate effects like rust, scratches, or mud. And these methods use various texture generation techniques, such as adjustable noise or predefined patterns, to achieve the desired effects, which can be edited later on in any way you want. For the sake of argument, let's take a look at Substance Painter. This software uses automatic detection algorithms to spot the different aspects of the 3D model, like edges and shadow heavy areas with ambient occlusion. With ambient occlusion and curvatures. Then, smart masks use this info to add effects like edgeware and dirt in the right places. One example is that dirt tends to accumulate in areas with a lot of shadows, which is what you can automatically achieve in Substance Painter instead of having to manually paint every tiny bit of dirt. Furthermore, it comes with many generators such as bricks and filters. And when you combine all of these, you can create textures that are more realistic and complex than what you could make with vertex painting, in theory at least. It is also easier to assign symbols and specific details with this method. But does this mean vertex painting is obsolete? What's really interesting to me when I saw online users comparing the two techniques is why you even have to choose. I can see where they are coming from, but think about it. As an artist, the goal has always been to create the best projects possible. So why limit yourself to one option when you can embrace both and open up more possibilities? Sure, in a certain extent they can do the same things, but they are far from being the same. For me, Working with texture painting is more hardware intensive, especially today, where high resolution textures are the norm for large scale environments. I mean, you may need close up shots, zooming in, and with the increasing quality of monitors and productions, it is getting even more complex. So, texture painting is what I like to use for individual assets, and this goes for most artists because it allows you to create complex and specific details thanks to a stronger set of tools, such as specific patterns, colors, and surface characteristics, which is important in assets like characters, props, and other projects that require close-up examination and highly visual fidelity. It may not look like it, but texturing is a very subtle art, which requires and tries to convey certain emotions, tell a story, and convey specific details that only the customization abilities of texture painting can achieve. However, if it is just adding simple colors or simple details, then vertex painting can work just fine, and it is arguably more optimized. Besides, you can start with texture painting and do the final touches with vertex painting. For example, let's say you are working on a game and you are designing the ground texture in Substance Painter. After exporting it to Unreal Engine and applying it across several continuous surfaces, you can use vertex painting to break down the tiling and points of interest, as well as any creative decisions to strengthen the overall visuals and its look and feel. On a side note, this topic is rich in content, with many interesting points of view left to discover. So this video serves just as a general introduction to what can be done using these two methods. And there you have it guys. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.